We are gonna get started here. I'm really disappointed that we can't get together physically this morning, but I wanna keep everyone safe and uh, unharmed today. The snow really isn't the issue if you're, if you're looking outside. Um, the north part of our driveway, the sidewalks and our parking lot though, have a thick sheet of ice underneath all that snow. So you can no longer see where the ice is and you might need to avoid it. So when I came out to evaluate it this morning, I might have left a few body prints uh, in the snow from where I fell, but there is no video evidence of that because if there was, Malia would have already put it online and we haven't seen it. So it may not have even happened. But we are, uh, we're glad we can do this this morning. Um, we're trying to determine if we will be able to treat this enough to get a safe path cleared so we can have our Valentine's banquet tonight. Um, we haven't made that decision yet as we're still looking to see what we can get done. Um, I don't know that we'll be able to get the parking lot clear enough to make that work, but we'll keep you up to date via the text groups and our Facebook page this afternoon once we've made that decision. In the meantime, since we're able to connect like this this morning, I'd like to uh, briefly conclude our series looking at our core values and uh, we'll do that from here in my office. So. This is our fifth and our final week of looking at the series, which we've titled, We Are. It's our last sermon that we're looking directly at our mission and our core values, but it's actually also at the same time the first sermon in our next series that we're starting, starting next Sunday. So I want to start with reminding you, as I have every week, of our mission statement, and then we'll turn to our final core value and see how this particular item connects to the mission. Hey, Maggie. Hey, Jason. Good to hear from you guys. So if you want to see this written out, you can go onto our website on your computer there, nelsonvilleag.org. Click on the Who We Are tab, and you can see uh, these core values in our mission statement all written out, and they're there for you to look at. So our mission statement, if you remember, is we exist to make disciples who are growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ and are proclaiming his gospel and glory as their personal mission. So I'm, I'm hoping week after week, as we have been hearing this, you are starting to recall it easier and a little more naturally as you think about why we exist as a church body. Our final core value, if you're at the page, the very last one we have listed, is not there because it's least important. In fact, it's a very important part of what makes Nelsonville Assembly, Nelsonville Assembly. It's a big part of my personal ministry philosophy and my passion. It's something that I believe really directly connects to our mission in a way that's more important than most of us often think. So in our core values, the final one, we have written that we are family focused. By that, what we've said is we believe that God has a plan and a purpose for every individual and group, including our church family. We want our church to be a safe place where individuals seeking community are welcomed and where families with children of all ages are equipped to grow together in their faith. So at the start of this core value is a really important assertion that I want us to be really clear on. In fact, it's what we're going to focus upon most of our time together today. I want us to keep it right in the forefront of our minds because even though I've talked about this concept before in a variety of locations, even this morning as we've gathered together online because of the snow and the ice, it's important for us to remember this reality. We believe that God has sovereignly and actively worked to bring each person that's on this stream, that's a part of our church family, into existence and lives in these particular communities at this point in time for a reason. God is not, as I talked about last week, merely some kind of supercomputer who's calculating possibilities or just has a theoretical knowledge of what could potentially happen. He is, according to the Bible, the creator God who begins, sustains, and rules over everything. And because of that, as we said last week, we believe he is at the center of everything that exists. So if you remember back to the end of last year, our final sermon in 2018, I talked about the theological term, the immutability of God, the, the belief that he is unchanging. So what we said is if God was learning, or to use the quote we talked about last week, if he's just playing the cards that he's been dealt, then he's not the all-perfect, all-knowing, completely sovereign, all-powerful God that the Bible tells us he is. So if we were to make that reality personal today, that God has a plan, that he knows us, he knows our lives, we're part of 
his work in this world, then God chose that I would be born in Wichita, Kansas, instead of London, England. He determined that I would live right now at this time in history rather than the 1500s. God led me to Central Bible College where I met my wife, and he led me here to Nelsonville to pastor this church. It's, it's his plan that I am a part of, and I'm serving his church and glorifying him with my life. And that's every bit as true for me as it is for you. God is sovereign over when and where all of us live. See, God's not just coming up with a plan the moment we pop into existence in our mother's womb. He knew exactly when we would be born to who we would be born from the beginning of time. See, the Bible's really, really clear on this, despite the fact that some people today have a, have a hard time believing this because it makes God more powerful and more personal than people are really comfortable with God being. In Acts chapter 17, verse 26, when Paul is preaching, he reminds us of this fact when he says, And he, God, made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and boundaries for their dwelling place. So put simply, what he's saying is God knows exactly when and where we will live. He's not learning that information as he glances down to see what's going on. And, oh, what a surprise. They moved from Springfield to Nelsonville. Who would have known? God determined it. He planned it even before the earth existed, the Bible tells us. Uh, Ephesians 1 is really clear. It says there, before the foundation of the world, it was God who was working and knew all of these things that would come to pass. See, the Bible declares that God is God over big things like life and death, health and sickness, and nothing can catch him by surprise. Deuteronomy 32, 39 says, See now that I, even I, am he. There is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I mean, it's big things. And we'd say, okay, God, God's sovereign over the big things. He, he knew Jesus was going to come. He knew Jesus was going to die. But those are big historical moments. But the Bible tells us God's personally sovereign as well. God is God over even the rain and the snow that's outside right now. Throughout the book of Job, one of my favorites, we're reminded that God is in charge of the weather repeatedly. If you just read through the book, you'd see this refrain kind of coming up in several different places in several chapters. But my favorite is at the end, in Job 38, when God is speaking from the whirlwind, he's challenging Job's um, questions. He says, look, listen, I will answer your questions, but you answer mine. And so in Job 38, 22, he says, have you entered the storehouses of snow? Have you seen the storehouses of hail that I have stacked up for the day of war? Part of me this morning wishes that that ice and snow that he's in control of was still in his storehouses and wasn't on our parking lot this morning. But we know that God sent it for a reason, even if it's not our reason. In Matthew 5, verse 45 Jesus is talking, he says, and he, God, makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. See, this morning it was God, not fate, not chance, not some cosmic card dealer. And it certainly wasn't you and I who were in control of anything large or small. None of us picked to have this ice and snow come down today. None of us control who's going to be sick and who's going to get better. None of us even control when we are born in this world, right? God is the one who's sovereign over when and where we are born. He's sovereign over who our families are. If, we, if that was up to us, some of us may have made a different choice with some of our family relationships, but God is the one who is in charge of all of that. Over in Psalm 139, we have the confident declaration that our lives, like everything else, is created and sustained by God. He knew us before we ever existed. Psalm 139 verse 16 says, Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. God knows it all. Nothing is secret. Nothing is hidden from him. He is the creator. He knew this day right here before it ever came into existence. He knew I'd be sitting in my office talking to you through a computer, and you'd be listening in the warmth of your own home today. 
And it's comforting when we see God this way because it reminds us we know from Scripture that God is good and he's powerful and he's loving. And if he knows what has happened and he knows what is happening and he knows what is coming for us, we have great confidence in him and in what the future holds. So coming back to our core value, we wrote, we believe that God has a plan and a purpose for every individual and group, including our church family. God's knowledge and God's plans are obviously much bigger than just us, right? They are certainly much bigger than just Nelsonville Assembly, but they do include us. See, we are not just a number on a heavenly spreadsheet. It's not just a checkbox on a list for God. He's not in heaven going, uh, remind me, did I save some people out there in Northeast Missouri? Was there a church in the 2000s? Yes. Okay, let's get back to the big stuff and the, the more important things. No, no. God knows us personally. He calls us individually by name. He knows our lives personally. See, the Bible makes it so clear that God is actively saving men and women around the world. And that means that he is at work in our communities as well. Get get this. He has us here in this time and in this place for a reason. I really believe that deeply. I know that none of us this morning who have joined this live stream or who are going to catch the video later, no one is going to hear this message by accident. I certainly didn't plan for it to be this way. I was hoping the sermon this morning would be in the sanctuary. We gathered together and it'd be another wonderful day of worship in this place. But God knew this was the way this message would be delivered. So because of this belief, because we believe that God is God, that he's sovereign, that he has a plan, that we're here for a reason, we put in our core values that we want our church to be a safe place where individuals seeking community are welcomed. And where family with children of all ages are equipped to grow in their faith together. As I've said, we have a God who actually saves people personally and individually. It's not just some group idea. It's not just two columns on a spreadsheet. And one is the saved people and one is unsaved people. And God's just kind of putting numbers into the different lines. That's not the way it works. God personally created. He personally sustains, as we saw last week. And amazingly, he personally saves his people. This is foundationally what we mean when we say that we are family focused here at our church. We believe that this community of believers is saved by God's grace. And we are made the family of God because we have all been adopted by him. So we want that to guide the way that we relate to one another as fellow members of the household of God, as part of his family. Now, I I said at the very beginning, this was our last part looking at our core values, but it's also the start of our next series as well. And that's really because of the last line of this core value. We wrote that we believe we want our church to be a place where families with children of all ages are equipped to grow together in their faith. Now, that is a big statement, even though it's one short little line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to springboard off of this to a larger discussion of what this means for those of us who are parents, who are grandparents and aunts and uncles and husbands and wives and brothers and sisters and cousins to other people. And we're going to start all of that next week. There are really important things for us to consider the reality that you and I are the family of God impacts how we relate with our physical, natural families that he has placed us in. So that's where we're heading in the next few weeks. But before we could get there, we had to talk about this reality this morning. God knows us. He has a plan for us. He knew this before this day ever existed. And so this morning, we should reorient our thinking. We should, we should evaluate how we're viewing the fact that there's ice on the ground and that weather has impacted our plans. And we should think about the fact that God knew all of this. And there's a reason for all of this happening. I want us to end today with a simple affirmation. Children, as we're going to talk about in the next couple of weeks, children are a blessing from God. And they're a key part of why we exist 
as a church. Psalm 127, verse 3, is probably familiar to many of you. It says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. With all the snow and ice that we've had lately, all the days off of school and the craziness that this winter has brought, sometimes we can be tempted to forget that those crazy, energetic, loud kids are actually blessings from the Lord, but they really are. We have then individually as part of families and together as a church an important responsibility to train them up and to lead them to Christ. Paul wrote in a letter to Timothy, a young man that he loved and considered to be like a son to him in the faith. And he reminded us of an important truth that I want to motivate us today and we'll talk about over the next several weeks. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, remember how From childhood, you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, 2 Timothy 3, 15. The scriptures, which we believe and we preach here at the church, and we're talking about this morning through this this live stream, reveal to us who Jesus Christ is. As I said before, I don't believe anyone's going to hear this message by accident. So if you're not a Christian, if, if you're not believing and following Jesus Christ, then here's what I want you to know. You're not listening to this. You're not hearing this this morning by accident. God's working through all the points of your life, all the decisions you've made, all the things that have happened in your life. He's worked through all of that so that this morning you would hear who he is, that he is the God who creates, the God who sustains, that there's, there's nothing in existence. We talked about this last week. You can go listen to that message on our YouTube channel. There's nothing that exists that God has not sustained to today. This God, this mighty, powerful, sovereign God, wants you to hear today the good news of his gospel, that he took on human flesh, real physical flesh, and he came and he died for sinners like you and I, sinners that gather together here at this building normally every single week. We gather together because Jesus Christ came to save sinners. And as he died for sinners, he made a way for us to come into a right relationship with him, a restored relationship with him. And as we do that, he not only forgives our sins, but he draws us into his family. So what we're talking about today is that we're part, if we're a Christian, we're a part of the family of God, that he's our father who loves us and treats us no matter how good or how bad your earthly father may have been. He is the perfect Father who treats us with love and care and compassion. And this relationship is what we want everyone around us in these communities that God has put us in by his plan. This is the message we want them to know, that there is this bigger family than just biological connections. There's a better community than just people gathering together in a building. There is something special here because Jesus Christ saves sinners and brings us into the family of God. So the scriptures tell us all of these things and we look to them to learn about who Jesus is and what he has done. And my hope this morning is that you would take advantage of this little bit of extra time that we find ourselves with today. There's no drive to make, there's nowhere to be this morning. So my hope is that you would take a few minutes and you would dig into the scriptures today that you would open up the Bible and you would read about this God that we have been talking about, that maybe you would go back and open up one of the messages from the last several weeks and, and hear the scriptures that we have been talking about have informed and created our core values. Maybe you'll spend a few minutes reflecting on who God is and what he's done and what that means for us. None of us are here by accident. We're here because God has a plan for us. And that's what we've been trying to explain as we've talked about our mission and we've talked about our core values is that there's a purpose for you and I to accomplish in our communities. And we want to be most effective in doing that. So today my hope is that you'll spend some time reading the word of God with your family if you are gathered together. Talk about God, talk about who he is and what he's done and you maybe could even sing a song together and worship him in your own home. And no, I am not going to lead a song here at the end of the stream. I'm sorry. But remember, as Christians, you and I are part of not only our physical families. There's a responsibility there. There's a 
there's a reason that God's put us with the brothers and sisters and cousins and aunts and uncles and parents that he has given us. But we're part of a bigger family too. We're part of the church global. So spend some time this morning praying for the church. Pray for our local gathering. Pray for other churches around the area. I know many others have found themselves this morning in the same situation we are as they are uh, canceling services and keeping people home so they can stay safe. Pray that the Lord would keep individuals safe. Those who have gotten out on the roads, pray that God would keep them safe today. We're part of a bigger family, something bigger and better than just our local communities. This morning, uh, uh, we're going to pray to close out in just a few minutes, and I'm going to pray God would draw us close and that he would encourage us and he would equip us as we worship him through the rest of this day. But I see Megan's joined, and so I want to say hi to Megan and happy birthday tomorrow uh, to you. Family song time sounds fun. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Hey, Marcia, good to see you on there. So if I'm encouraging you to read the scriptures and you feel like there's a passage you want to go and read, that's great. There's not really an assigned reading, but I would encourage you if you don't know where to go, maybe go over to the book of Job. Read those last three chapters, four chapters in the book there, starting maybe Job 38 and read through what God says about who he is and the questions he asks for Job as he's responding to the fact that Job is in a situation where it'd be so easy to forget that God is who he said he is, that he's big and powerful and he's in control. As God makes plain to Job through this series of questions, have you, do you know this? Tell me if you understand. Go read that and talk with your family this morning about what what that shows you about who God is, how different God is, how much bigger and more powerful and sovereign God is compared to us. And if you sing this morning, you can enjoy uh, some wonderful songs. If you just Google uh, some of the songs we've done here uh, in our church. Last week, we sang In Christ Alone or All Because of Christ by Austin Stone Worship. Wonderful songs. You can find great videos of them. If you have a YouTube app on your TV, you can pull them up and the lyrics are right there. You can sing along with your family. Or if you have a hymn book at home, we have several in our home. We love to sing about uh, all creatures of our God and King. We sing about how this God we serve is bigger than everything that's created and is different. And so if you have something like that, I encourage you this morning to spend some time worshiping God and talk about what we have discussed here today, that God is big, that he is sovereign, that he knew this day before it ever happened. And there's a reason for it. So as you spend time with your family today, discuss this God. Spend time in worship of him, even in your own home. Hi, baby Elam. Good to see you or hear that you've joined us today. We can't wait to see you here at church very soon. Let me pray, and then I will send you off. Get your Bibles, gather your family together, and spend some time worshiping the Lord. Let's pray together, though. Father, we thank you so much for your great love for us. We believe that the verses we have read today, the the things we've talked about are true, that you are a big God, a sovereign God. God, who has power, who has might and strength, and you're wise, far wiser than we could ever be. This morning, God, I pray that as we spend a little bit of time with our individual families, that you would help us think about what this means, this belief in who you are and what you have done, what this means for us individually as we interact with people in our communities, around us, in our neighborhoods, and what does this mean for the church? God, help us to understand how we can be a family-focused church, a a church that lives in the reality that we are not only families gathering together, but we are part of the family of God. I pray, God, for all the parents and all the grandparents that are coming in these next several weeks, that you would help us to come with open hearts and minds as we study now. What does it mean and, and what are the implications of being a Christian and being part of a biological family? What is our responsibilities? We talk about that. I pray, God, you would help challenge us and equip us through these next several weeks to be better followers of you. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. As I said, we will let you know about our Valentine's banquet once we've made a decision on that in the next couple hours. We're hoping we can get some things cleared up, but I'm just not sure we'll have enough uh, ability to treat the parking lot to keep it safe. And as I said in the core value, we want our church to be a place that is safe 
for everyone to gather. So we'll keep you updated on that. Keep an eye on your phone, on our Facebook page here for that information. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe and warm and be very careful. As I have found out this morning, it can be very, very slick. God bless. I hope to see you next Sunday. Thank you.